Yes, yes, welcome to another video, guys. City got the job done. Lots to talk about. There were some parts of the game which weren't great, but then we did end real strong. So, yeah, there are definitely a lot of positives to take from that game, as well as a few... You know areas of, uh, of the play that need to sort of improve we're going to talk through some of them now before we do guys please smash a like on the stream subscribe to the channel if you're new and check out this uh, uh this sponsor clip from manscaped 85 percent of partners prefer a man who is groomed below the waist and 96 percent of partners think bad grooming is a major turn off that's where manscapes have come in to help us all out including myself lads the lawnmower 4.0 is a trimmer specifically designed with our crown jewels in mind it has skin safe technology to reduce those nicks and cuts and gives you the maximum confidence while trimming below the waist it's also ipx7 waterproof rated so you can operate in wet or dry conditions it has a premium 7000 rpm motor with quiet stroke technology and a massive 90 minute battery time which is supported by its wireless electromagnetic charging function with the performance package 4.0 you'll get the crop reviver with witch hazel and powerful odor defense this keeps your balls protected after a good shave crop preserver with its soothing aloe vera and advanced quick absorbing cream keeping your balls feeling fresh and hydrated and the weed whacker to trim ear and nose hair. The performance package 4.0 has everything you need to keep you the most groomed man in the room. Use our code extra 20 XTRA20 at checkout and you'll save yourself 20% off your order and receive free international shipping. Yes, yes, thanks a lot for Manscaped for sponsoring the video. Absolute goats. We use it all the time, Bray, as he always tells me, innit? You know what I mean? I'll just come in and do the Manscaped, innit? You know what I mean? So uh, go check it out. Legit sick. Uh, Manscaped.com, extra 20 for 20% off and free shipping. Right, let's get into it then, bro. Um, interesting, man. You know what I mean? I mean, we spoke so much during the live watch along about. What's going on at the moment at City in terms of our performance levels and maybe are we overreacting? Have, have our performance levels just had a slight drop? You know what I mean? Because you look at the re the results and it's only sort of like three or four matches that you can look at in the sort of last two months where you go, mm, yeah, not great. And a lot of the other ones were, were all right. It's, and it's just a weird... It's kind of a weird feeling at the moment at the club, isn't it? I, I don't know. what. Maybe it's the pressure. I don't I don't really understand it. Yeah, it's it doesn't seem like... It doesn't seem like the nice attacking flowing city that we're kind of used to seeing it's very mm. i don't know everything just seems like a pure graft everything is like hard work yeah um and obviously that's a credit to other teams and that doing bits against us but at the same time i just feel like we're not there like you know, but then we are getting results i know we drew against palace and that but we are we are getting results even though i don't think we're at our best at the moment it's yeah. just it's just really weird it's a it's a really weird feeling watching city at the moment you can't like, put your finger on what's actually like you can't like you can't basically identify an area and go that's why we're being shit right now that's what that's the reason yeah, like, and I don't of course, it. it's, it's, it's funny because some people might watch this and go, what the fuck are you on about? We won 4 1. Yeah, but we're not talking about the result. We're talking about the performance. You know what I'm on about? City usually play like nice, free, attacking football. Everyone's looking kind of chill on the ball. At the moment, it just looks like something ain't quite right. And I'm not sure. The positive side of this whole situation, bro, is I thought we ended the game really, really good. And actually, that's reflected in the sub, in, in the uh, in the player ratings for the subs, which you'll see in a moment. Um, yeah, I, I thought that we ended the game really, really strong. Now, of course, there may be an element of Southampton may have just sort of give up towards the end. They don't feel like they were going to get the result. But I thought going forward, we're a lot more sort of um, de decisive in our yeah. in whatever we were doing whether we were shooting whether we were passing crossing I thought that players weren't taking an age to make the decision they were just doing it um, and I thought uh our passing was a lot cr more crisp uh, in that sort of like final 15 minutes than it was maybe earlier on in the game so yeah whilst there were certainly parts of the game which we didn't look great the, the positive of the situation is, well, one, we threw to the next round. Um, we're, you know, we're in the semi-final. And two, we ended the game really, really strong. And that's obviously the last thing that people will sort of remember. You know I mean, today and, and the next day, you may talk about sort of, oh, that 15-minute period there and the game weren't good. We looked really shaky. Um, but in a week's time, two weeks' time, when the boys are back in the team, the last thing that you're going to remember is a 4-1 victory against Southampton, a team that we've really struggled against this season. So a lot of positives, still things to work on, but a lot of positives nonetheless. Yeah. Um, 
like you say, like you say, some parts were dodgy, some parts were dodgy. Like, do you know what I mean? There, there was situations where people will be like speaking about like the Stefan situation. A lot of people in our chat was like blaming Stefan for the goal, the, the Laporte own goal. The Southampton did have a lot of chances. We do need to fix up our defence and that. But going forward, that last bit after we made them subs, it was just, it, it, it was basically, this is how this is how we want to be seeing the team playing. Just yeah. effortless football, passing about, pinging the ball about, taking shots. Do you know what I mean? When we need to, Phil Foden sc- scored a world, you know what I mean? And stuff like that. It's just, that's the city that you want to see. And it's and then when, when we're in that, and it's like, we're, it's very confidence like kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Once we get going kind of thing, you, it's it's mad. We, we play such nice football once we get going in that kind of, in that kind of like, in, it's when we're in our element. And mm. uh, that's why, that's why this game now that we're looking at and it's a 4-1 win. Yeah. Um, it's not like a. It doesn't feel like it was a close game right now. Do you know what I mean, or anything like that. And like you say, in two week, in two weeks' time, when the players come back, oh, last thing they've done is, is go and beat Southampton four one. So they should kick on with that. Obviously, we got Burnley when we get back and big times, isn't it? So it's, it's the big after this two weeks. It's a massive, massive period. Mm. So you know what I mean, I, I I hope I hope we can carry that final bit of play that we had against Southampton. That final bit. Let's carry that bit through. Mm, yeah, bro, now I've got to ask you. Uh, I was pushing that Gundogan agenda hard before the game and this week, man. I wanted him back in the team. He came back into the team today. What was your thoughts on his performance? Uh, you called it, bro. You called it. You you, you smashed it. He, Gundogan today was sick. Gundogan mm. was mint. It was like he had free roam to go wherever he wanted on the pitch. So he, he, he kind of was like the maestro. He was getting about doing bits. Uh, honestly, he was mint. He was mint. And also... I, this could, might not be linked. Rodri showed more signs of the good Rodri than the bad Rodri t- in yeah, this game. I and I don't know so. whether, whether he felt a bit more confident with having Gundogan uh, like near him. Do you know what I mean? Able to help him out a bit more. Mm. I don't know. Like we, we spoke about that in the preview. I don't know if that, that is a thing. It might not be a thing, but he did show a bit. He did look a little bit better. But Gundogan today, incredible. Incredible. That chest down, the ball from Cancelo, the chest down and he pass it off to Mares. Do you know what I mean? No, pretty much, can't yeah, even see him. Yeah. The thing is with Gundogan, he's actually a box-to-box player. Yeah. He really, really is. And people don't really think of him like that but he's probably one of the best box to box players in the league to be honest I mean he's always on the edge of the penalty area on, on our own penalty area receiving the ball popping it off when Rodri you know is making space or whatever in the middle of the park he's always sort of seems to be in the centre circle you know the counter attack or whatever helping switch the play and he gets assists and he gets goals for me guys you know what I mean I've been ramping this guy up all week and I will not stop doing it because for me I do think that if we're to go on and, and secure the Premier League and if we're going to, going to have success in the FA Cup and the Champions League I'm a firm believer that Ilkay Gundogan needs to be in that team yeah, I really do without, and, and without today you know he's not even played that much football this year and today I thought he came in and he had a brilliant performance so um, yeah let us know your thoughts on Ilkay Gundogan guys um, right let's get into the player ratings then bro um, Stefan gets a 7.9 interesting we've not actually spoke about the the goal that they that, that they scored a lot of people blaming Stefan some people blaming Laporte uh, for me I've got to blame quite a lot of people I it's thought a calamity isn't it Walker <laughs> You know, he needs to play him offside or track the runner. He doesn't. He tries to play him offside, but he doesn't play him offside. So he's at fault there and he probably should track the runner. Um, could John Stones be more aware of the player behind him? Potentially, you know, ever so slightly. Um, Stefan comes out. Could he do better? Could he Could he go and commit? Possibly, but he might give a penalty away. Should he do better when the guy turns around? Should he go, go to the player? Maybe. Should Cancelo be more aware? The guy doesn't start sprinting into the penalty area until it's far too late and then could Laporte do a little bit better and not get the ball into his own net? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think anyone really has done anything majorly bad and all the people have different opinions and let them know in the comment section below and we'll, we'll see what people are saying. But for me, I just think everyone in the back line didn't really do great and as, and as a result, the ball ended up in the back of the net. I'm not pinning it on one person in particular. I actually think Kyle Walker's getting away with quite a, quite a lot here. Cause getting away with murder. <laughs> he's the guy who didn't play him on side. Uh, he didn't get, he's a guy who didn't play him offside and he didn't track the runner. And I think people are letting him off a little bit lightly there. So, anyway, let us know your know thoughts in the comment section below on that. Anything to add on that, bro? No, no, I, th- I think you're right with that. Um, Walker gets a 7.4. John Stones, who I think he's in brilliant, brilliant form right yeah. now, gets an 8.1. Laporte, a bit low with a 5.6. Probably has a lot to do with the with the own goal. People tend to give low ratings when, when that happens. Cancelo, 7.5. And Rodri, who you did speak about a little bit, um, he gets a 6.8. I think Rodri did look slightly better today. There were still moments when he looked a little yeah, bit a dodgy out of it. Still. But um, hopefully, again, you know, 
I don't know whether he's going to play for Spain or it's going to be Busquets, but hopefully we can see maybe a little bit of a rest. Or Basically, I don't care whether he gets rested or not. I need him to be in top form when he comes back because this is where it matters. Yeah. Uh, De Bruyne gets an 8.4. Thought he was mint today. Um, do you know what I mean? Pinging balls well. Um, Gundo with an 8.2. Uh, I'm actually surprised he could have get an 8.2. I thought everyone would have been gassing him up. And do you know what I mean? Because like, he, he, he was really, I think really if good. he got a goal... If he would have got a goal, yeah. He, would have been... he could have had one in the first half. Yeah, yeah, hit the post. If he would have got a goal, he would have, would have been up in the nines. Yeah. Uh, Gabby gets a 7.3. I thought Gabby was decent today. There was a lot of slander on Gabby in our chat, but I, I thought he was all right today. Do you know what mm. I mean? He was doing bits on the right-hand side. Like, yep. Um, yeah, I, thought right. I, I thought he was all right. And obviously, he won us the penalty. Uh, Grealish with a 6.6 mm-hmm. um, yeah I see <laughs> people, people a lot of people hating on Grealish as well uh, but I, I don't know what it is I, I, maybe maybe he could have shot and got a, there was a chance for him to shoot and he, he probably yeah. could have scored from there I won't say do you know I mean I, I'm, I'm I know I'm a massive Grealish fanboy, but I wouldn't say it's a I wouldn't say it's Grealish's best game that he's played for the club. I think the 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 subs that we make that we, that we made, he's one of the ones that made way for like Foden. And I think the impacts of them coming on the pitch were incredibly different. Do you know what I mean? So we might end, when when it comes back, we might end up seeing Grealish having a little bit period out of the team. Pep might look at that and go, mm. you know what I mean? Grealish, you're gonna have to make way because the other players are smashing it. And and Sterling gets an eight point three. And again, thought Sterling did minute as well. Yeah, I thought he had a good game. Uh, substitutions, and this is where it gets really interesting because actually the man of the match is um, is actually on the bench. You get Foden yeah. with a 9, Mahrez with a 9.1, Zinchenko 7.8, Fernandinho 7.6, and Ake with a 7.4. And it's really Foden and Mahrez there with the, with the super high ratings and obviously man of the match um, there for Mahrez, Foden just behind. And usually that's very strange. You don't. I think that's the first time we've ever seen a sub get a man of the match. But really, the last 15 minutes when one with these players were on the pitch, we were incredible. I thought we had Mahrez... Obviously, got got himself the goal, um, and I thought it was I thought it was amazing. I thought some of his touches. I remember one the ball coming down from the air, and he he sort of like back heeled it on on the sort of drop to to Kevin to, De Bruyne. To Kevin Bride, yeah, it yeah. was it was really it was it was really really good. Um, I was buzzing with his performance. Phil Foden looked really really good as well. Obviously, him getting that brilliant goal um, obviously propels him into the nines, and yeah, just no real surprise there. I'm obviously rating for Pep is on screen along with the referee guys. So that's it. Into the semi-finals we go, absolutely buzzing, brilliant way to get um, to get a dub there into the international break now. So, yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. If you have, please smash the thumbs up on it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Go check out Manscapes at manscaped.com and get yourself a lawnmower. Um, yeah, the only place deforestation is allowed is uh, on your balls. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. See you in a bit, guys.